Praise to be Jesus and Mary. In today's first reading, St. Paul has an interesting argument with regard to his own ancestors entering into the rest that God promises. He tells us that they heard the good news just as we have. But it didn't profit them because they didn't believe. And he talks about the fact that uh, God's rest was established on the seventh day of creation. In other words, uh, to be able to uh, enter that, enter into that uh, eternal rest is not something that uh, began only when Jesus came into this world, but rather that uh, it began from the beginning. So the opportunity to enter into that rest is something that uh, the ancients had as well, and they knew it. Uh, they didn't know the fullness of it as we do, but uh, they knew enough that uh, they would be able to enter into his rest. Unfortunately, they were a, a rebellious, they were rebellious and disobedient uh, to God. So many uh, didn't enter into his rest, even though they had seen all of his uh, mighty works, his miracles. Now, you know, we can look at that and say that, you know, we haven't seen the parting of the Red Sea or all these other miracles of God. But then the, uh, the necessity of it wasn't there either. You know, for those uh, folks, he was trying to demonstrate to them the reality, the reality of his existence, and that he was the God who had chosen them. And for us, you know, we already know that part of history, and we have the fullness of the teaching of our Lord, so that it, this doesn't need to be demonstrated for us. What we need is to make the act of faith just as the people of old had to do. Even though uh, they saw the mighty works of God. You know, you know we too have seen uh, many works of God. We have uh, many things that they never saw. We have the Eucharist. You know, they didn't have that. Uh, we have confession. They didn't have that either. We have baptism. They did not. We have the grace of the Holy Spirit made known to us. They had that to a degree, but it wasn't as evident to them as it is to us. We have uh, many opportunities and uh, many gifts from God. So none of us can say that uh, we've been deprived. And so the question is, do we believe. Because the only way, as St. Paul tells us, to enter into the rest that the Lord is offering is to believe in his word and to live it, to act upon it. Now, even the people of our Lord's day, 
We hear in the gospel, you know, gather around to hear him to the point where uh, the entire town was gathered at the door and, and there was no room. And at the same time, we know from other places in the gospel that uh, Jesus condemned this very town. He condemned Capernaum because of the works that were worked there. You know, if they had been worked in Sodom and Gomorrah and Tyre and Sidon, you know, those people would have converted. And the people of Capernaum did not convert. And so, even in the place where our Lord was most of the time in his public life, the people who heard his preaching, the people who saw the miracles that he worked, you know, they were untouched, unmoved by what the Lord had done. And we see all the miracles of our Lord in our own day. We have the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the sacraments, the gospel preached to us. And we too, many of us, are untouched, unmoved by what the Lord has done. You know, these people and we as well marvel at his glorious works, the miracles of grace, but uh, they didn't listen to his word and many people today do not listen to his word. We, uh, they refuse, just as we do, to allow our hearts to be open and changed. You know, it's interesting to listen to what uh, the Lord asked the scribes who were uh, thinking in their minds various things. You know, Why do you harbor these thoughts in your hearts? That's exactly what he's going to ask us. What is in our hearts? We know in our minds what the truth is, and we haven't rejected it, but what about our hearts? It is uh, that, you know, which the Lord is uh, looking at. We need to... Uh, Take the truth that we know in our minds and we need to get it into our hearts and to live it. We need to act upon it. You know, otherwise, uh, what St. Paul said to the people of old is going to be said to us as well. That uh, you know, they received the good news but what they heard did not profit them because they were, not, uh, they were not united in faith with those who listened. You know, the people of Capernaum heard, but they didn't listen. You know, what about us? We know the truth. Do we live it? We have the gospel preached to us. Do we listen to it? Do we take it in and change our lives so that uh, the good news of the gospel is going to have uh, an effect in the way that, that we live our lives?